Welcome! In today's video, I will share a couple of methods on how we can remove a white background in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. We will begin with a fairly easy image, a plain vector based image with a white background. To make things a bit more interesting, this image also has some gradients and shadow. Let's see how that works out. The easiest method for removing white is using a built in filter in Affinity Photo. Select from the filters menu the color and then erase white paper. Done. That was easy. A nice side effect of this filter is that the white is also removed from the shadows and the gradients, which looks great by the way on this image. So what if we don't want the shadows and the gradients? A quick way is to apply a curves adjustment layer to remove them. In the curves dialog, move the highlights until the shadows and the gradients are gone. Before we can apply the erase white paper filter, we need to make sure that it becomes a single layer. To make a single layer, use the merge visible menu from the layers panel, which will create the layer we need for the filter. Now that we have our layer, let's apply the filter again. Let me turn off the underlying original layers to see the effect. Excellent, exactly what we needed. While we're having fun, let me share another quick way which would also be useful for other background colors besides white. We will use the select sampled color functionality. Let's copy the original layer and rasterize it. From the select menu, we will use the select sampled color. As you can see, it already selected the whites for me. But you can click on any color you want to select. By adjusting the tolerance, we can deselect the gradient and the shadows. Pressing delete will remove the selection, which is actually what we want. Let's suppose you want to work the other way around because the background is not a single color. Instead of selecting the background color, in our case the white, we can select the area we want to keep. And to make things interesting, let's assume the array we want to keep has multiple colors. So let me quickly fill two persons with two different colors to simulate this. We are going to select multiple colors and the select sample color function in Affinity can only select one color. We will need to store the selections we make for the multiple colors. How can we do that? Meet the channels panel. Once we get a color selected, just add it as a spare channel. After we get all the spare channels we need, we can create our final selection by using the add to pixel selection from the spare channels we created. Now, if we add a mask, Affinity will create a mask from our selection. What else can you wish for? As I quickly did the color selection, the final mask is not perfect as you can see, but we can easily fix this by editing the mask and painting away the unwanted parts. So, this was part one. Let's move to the next part with a more challenging image. Here we have a delicious looking sandwich and the goal is to select the sandwich without the shadows. My preferred method is to use the flood select tool. Press and hold the mouse. Now while holding the mouse button, move the mouse to increase or decrease the tolerance of the selection. Release your mouse when you have a rough selection. You can add to the selection by pressing the control key on your keyboard and doing the same trick with the mouse on areas that are not selected. Repeat this process until you have the selection you're looking for.
Don't forget, we can always fine-tune the selection with other selection tools like the lasso selection to add or remove some areas that we were not able to select correctly with the flood selection. As we have selected the white, let's invert the pixel selection and then apply a mask. By using the Refine Mask dialog, we can improve our mask. At the end, we have a good selection, but still we have some white bleed. We can remove some of this white bleed by painting on a new layer with linear burn or overlay blend mode. Select a color from the image and try painting. At the end we probably still have some white bleed. Final step to get rid of them is to apply a white matte filter. Let's first apply a merge visible action which will create a new layer and apply the white matte filter from the filters menu. This will remove the white bleed, however somehow we now have a black bleed. No problem, just enable the original layer at the bottom and we're done. The end result is quite impressive I have to say. Ok, let me share another way of removing the white background. This takes a little bit more time, but in some cases this method could work better for you. Let's duplicate the original layer and create a group with it. Now, what we first want to do is to get rid of the shadows. We can do this by creating a new layer with overlay blend mode and paint on this layer with white. Don't worry about the colors changing. We will also paint with black on the areas which have low contrast. The idea is to get a sharp outline of the sandwich with a good contrast so we can use it to create a mask. If you have painted too much, no worries, just use the eraser to correct it. The next step is to remove the colors. This can be easily done with the black and white adjustment layer. Move all the colors to the left, so we get a nice dark image. As you can see, we still have some shadows which are mainly in the yellow color. As we don't want any shadows, adjust the yellow slider in a way that the shadows do not get completely black, but stay grey. Ok, super. Now we need to get rid of the shadows again, with a new overlay blend mode layer. Just paint with white over the grey areas to get rid of them. As you might know, the overlay blend mode will not touch the blacks. Next step is to darken the image. What do we use? Of course a curves adjustment layer. Move the shadows all the way to the right. As you see, we still have some impurity. You know the drill by now, brush with white on a new layer with overlay blend mode. It took a couple of steps but we are almost there. Now let's apply a merge visible action from the layers context menu and our mask is ready. To create a mask, Let's use the select color dialog and adjust the tolerance.
Finally, we're almost there. On our original layer, add a mask and we're done. Of course, we can fine tune our mask with the refine mask tool or adjust the mask directly. Actually, we are done with the tutorial right now. Keep watching if you want to see some tips on making this sandwich look delicious. Let's group our image with the mask. Duplicate the mask and move the mask to the group. This enables us to add adjustments which only apply to our masked sandwich. To make the sandwich more appealing on our current background, let's add some color details. For example, the cheese should be a bit more yellowish. We can do this by adding a new pixel layer and set its blend mode to overlay. In this layer, just paint with yellow. We still have some white areas. To fix this, add another layer, but now with the blend mode set to color. Paint the white areas with yellow again, and you get a nice Gouda cheese sandwich. Let's make the bread more appealing by adding more orange color to it. We will use the same technique, add a layer, set the blend mode to color and paint in as desired. The final step is to add a curves layer and adjust it so it gets a bit more body. Wow, that looks delicious. We can also get the shadows back if desired by applying the outer shadow effect. As you notice, the shadow effect also created some shadows on the top left side of the document. No idea if this is a bug or not, but no worries. Group the whole thing and select the sandwich with the shadow and apply a mask. Clean it and there you have it. Amazing. Before I finish up, I just want to highlight why the remove white paper filter would not work on this image. As the sandwich contains a lot of highlights and whites, the end result of this filter would be really bad, as you can see right now. Of course, you can fix this by adding a layer with white below it, but to do a good job, you probably have to create a good mask for this layer, which is exactly what we did earlier. And if you have the mask, why worry about this? However, depending on the image you are working with, you could maybe get away with it or maybe you can quickly paint the white. I have shown a couple of techniques and it's up to your creativity on how to tackle the problem of white backgrounds. If you know any other techniques, please feel free to share them in the comments. This video turned a bit longer than I expected. However, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. Until next time.